Mental illness is defined as health conditions involving change in emotion, thinking, or behavior. How it affects an individual is depending on the type of disorder the person suffers from. The more common disorders are mood disorders, such as depression, anxiety disorders, trauma, and substance abuse. Mental illnesses affect many people, so much as one in four adults in the U.S. will suffer from a diagnosable mental illness in any given year. A big complication with this form of illness is that it is not visible, making it difficult to know when someone may be suffering from it, even if you thought you knew that person very well. During the research process, I created a survey and sent it to as many friends, acquaintances, co-workers, and former co-workers, asking if they had ever gone through a form of mental illness, along with a few other questions. The first thing I wanted to learn was how many of these people that I thought I knew went through something like this. I would be lying if I said I didn't expect a number of people to say they had gone through a form of mental illness. However, the results were eye-opening to say the least. Of the 25 people that completed the survey, 20 admitted to having battled with a form of mental illness. I wanted to dive in deeper and ask somebody who deals with it personally. To further the research, I asked four people that have severely suffered with depression if I could interview them. I wanted to get their opinions on topics like mental illness and entertainment media, but more importantly, I wanted them to tell me their story. Of the four initially asked, one did not want to commit due to time constraints. One initially agreed, but understandably dropped out. Another agreed, but did not want to be filmed. And one agreed to be filmed, wanting to share his story. My name is Luis Daniel Garcia, um, 22 years of age. Uh, I dealt with depression and emotional distress for a little over four years. Um, it's been a tough challenge to try to overcome it, but at the end of the day, it's kind of hard to, so most people just find a better way to hiding it more than just overcoming it. Um, so technically speaking, when I first noticed was a little bit after I graduated high school, uh, I was a little distant with not only my friends, but I was distant with my family. Uh, I kept a lot of emotions uh, bottled up, I kept most of what I wanted to say to a lot of people, I kept it to myself. This is a common thought process throughout the research. The other participant expressed a similar thought process. Admitting about lying to friends about seeing a therapist instead of seeking professional help. He also shared the need to remain private, not wanting to share with others of what he was going through. My type of depression is based off triggers. So I can have a good day and not think about anything that could trigger how I feel. But then if I see something that not necessarily discomforts me, but kind of triggers of why I always felt a, a need to, to not necessarily have a companion, but to have somebody that I can talk to or to feel understood, um, then I feel my chest gets in pain. I feel trapped, I feel clogged. Um, then I'm just, my mood gets killed and it, and it can happen at any time. I'm starting to feel sad, you start feeling Neglected, you start feeling like you don't have a purpose anymore. You just start feeling like you don't want to just be here anymore. You just want to go home and sleep. Or you just want to be alone. You just start asking yourself these self-doubting questions. And it gets so heavy. And it gets even heavier. And then heavier that you just say, oh, fuck it. I don't want to be here right now. And then you get in the mood that you don't want to talk to anybody. It's hard. It gets extremely hard. 
We then asked him about his thoughts on mental illness in entertainment media. Do you think that the entertainment business, such as movies or shows, have an influence on perception of mental illness? I think it does because what happens is, you know, they make a movie off somebody that's suffering or that's going through a lot. And the people who are watching are like, oh, that must be what the depression is. Hey, that's sad. But it's not. You cannot, in no way, shape, or form, through media or through any type of entertainment, see and feel exactly what we go through. There's just no way because everybody is different. So when you see a specific movie and you think, oh, that's sad, I guess this is what depression feels like. I feel for them. No, you don't. Because until you actually get to know someone, until you actually live with it yourself, then you're like, you know what? Whatever that person went through in that movie, then I feel for them. But what I'm going through now sucks. So what I'm understanding is that you get a sense of annoyance when you, when you see a movie or show try to tell you what it's like when you know it's different. Exactly. And not necessarily annoyance, but it's more of, dude, you got it wrong. And can't really put the idea of this is what it means. So it's more of a sense of denial and annoyance. Because I can watch a movie and be like, damn, that's what's really up and actually relate to it. Don't get me wrong, there are some media, like for example, there's some shows, there's some uh, movies, there's some uh, songs or interviews that you can actually relate to and be like, damn, you know, like, I understand what's going on. Like, it's similar to what I'm going through. So they do a good job of you know, getting it to be related or relatable to people that deal with the same solution. But they have to understand that it's just a vague, like they're only touching the tip of the iceberg. They can't draw to the conclusion that this is what it all is. And a lot of media does that in their sense, this is what the person is. But in reality, it needs the whole picture. Like they need to take stories from everyone. It is noticeable that perspective is key when it comes to perception of content featuring mental illnesses. When asked about the shelter, two reasons why, Luis shared a level of satisfaction and appreciation. I'll tell you this, that's very, uh, it's a very good show, I'll tell you that. Uh, but if I had to describe that movie in one word, as far as what depression means, you almost hit the ball. You almost did. Basically what I'm saying is, it gave you an idea of what it's like to feel enclosed within yourself. And if you do see somebody that you know is going through a tough time, then it should relay a message like, hey, say something soon rather than late. You never know when it's too late. So, it did shine a light as uh, to people who need someone to talk to, and how hard it is to reach out to people. It did shine a light on that. But again, I still believe that it missed a lot of, a lot of key important points as to how to exactly deal with it. While many proclaimed that this type of show could be harmful, Luis felt a connection with the show relating to how it feels to live with depression. The same was felt for the Joker. Split, also the Joker. It's a great example of what it's like to live with emotional anxiety and um, confusion, that you lose your sense of your own personality. Um, I really love the Joker. I feel like I can relate to it because you start to realize that the world is a cool place to live in. Uh, Split did a good job of realizing that people with mental illnesses that affect your personality and make you seem like you're living in a different reality from time to time, uh, they do a good job of expressing the idea of, I, would believe, I like to believe that Split was a little bit over exaggerated, but Joker did, they hit it right on the block by saying, hey, it's a cool world we live in, and 
It takes a little bit of madness to survive in madness. That's exactly what Joker did. I really, I love that movie to death. One of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, I can't help, especially that last moment when he went crazy. Um, he saw the whole world burn. I honestly have never felt so alive watching that scene. My understanding from Luis's response was that there needs to be a better job in terms of accuracy when it comes to films and series portrayal of mental illness, though at times he can relate to them. He feels they don't do enough for the community. However, the biggest realization from his insight has nothing to do with movies portrayals and its impact on the mentally ill or public perception. The most eye-opening aspect of the interview was the negativity of his household and how that worsens his condition. Emotions as a run in the family. Um, I can't remember the last time my parents told me I love you. And I can't remember the last time I told them that I love them. Um, and that's because my family sees emotion as weakness. The same was the case when asking with the second participant. Instead of having the support group at home, they give more of a reason to feel neglected. Both participants live and grew up in a household where emotions weren't exactly permitted. So, three months after I graduated, I told my family that, you know, I wanted to become a music engineer. Um, and it brought so many problems because they judged me for it. They didn't think it was a worthy career, or they didn't think that it was gonna be something that could bring family honor. So they held expectations to me that I didn't feel quite comfortable with. And because of that, I felt trapped in my own household. I couldn't speak to nobody. I couldn't tell anybody how I feel. I had no choice but to help keep it inside and just tell people that I'm okay or I'm working on something. Anything that you bring up is essentially a, an excuse to them. It's not a real motive as to following your dreams. Um, so following one's dreams in my um, way of living, uh, in the way that I was raised, was not something that we were allowed to do. And that does bring an emotional uh, distress of somebody because it, it limits to what you can do. And knowing that you can become a great person, but at the same time restrained from that, um, is why many people find themselves trapped uh, because they just want to be themselves. Before, I always been believing that my money bought everything, including happiness. It buys a moment of happiness, but how I feel like I the emptiness that I have is comfort. Having a sense of in a talk somebody talk to somebody about who I am and who I could become. And when you don't have that, it makes making up such a drag. Because you can have a long ass day and you don't come home. family, I ask you, hey, how was your day? You tell them, you know, they don't care because they just, they're off into space. Having someone you can have a general conversation with, I feel like you're judged. Man, that's hard to find. That's real hard to find. I think that would bring the most my happiness. I think that's what would really be an asset to what I could become. Hmm. Now that they are grown, it is up to them to find their own happiness, something that seems was neglected from them by their household. Mostly when I'm traveling, when I'm out um, hitting the road and taking it where it takes me, uh, especially when I went to Oklahoma by myself. And I took that moment to so I guess analyze myself and really think to myself. As the sun was setting, I can remember that I saw the sun just a little bit over the trees. Um, I 
I sat down on the ground, right there where I was standing. At that moment, all of everything that I was thinking of was gone. My mind went to three moments ago. And I knew that right there in there, I was truly happy. Even if it was for a second, I was happy. Whenever I went out, took my trip, or when I'm out with the people that I care about, or that I genuinely know that I can trust, I'm happy. Even if it's just for a moment, I'm happy. But when it goes away, I'll do it. To get it back. People just have to get out. Find what people find happiness for themselves. You just gotta find it. When talking to these people, I can't help but think, yes, there needs to be improvement in the entertainment industry. But more importantly, there needs to be an improvement in society. People need to be better for them and for everyone.